moment from the Miami Public Health Assessment Committee for National Women's Year, um, but I'm also a positive psychology-based teacher in Chattanooga and the founder of Positive Psychology Miami. And we're dedicated to spreading the science of happiness and human flourishing um, and growing the positive psychology community in South Florida. Um, how many of you are familiar with positive psychology? You've heard of it before, has an idea of what it is. Awesome. Um, so sometimes when people hear positive psychology, they're like, well, is there a negative psychology? Um, and the answer is kind of. Um, traditionally, psychology focused on what was wrong with people, uh, like things like depression and anxiety and mental illness, and how we could fix those things things like age, gender, um, how much money you make, uh, whether you're single, whether you're in a relationship, where you live. Uh, and these are the things that people tend to think contribute a lot to the level of happiness and well-being, when in reality, it's nowhere near as much as it may seem. Um, so that leaves now 40%. And 40%
then your relationships will have been precipitated and you'll experience a big spike in your level of happiness. And over time, um, you'll adapt and it'll come back down to your original plan of happiness. The same thing with the negative events. Um, if there's a death in the family, with some exceptions, certain outliers, um, with time you'll eventually come back up to your original plan of happiness. In order to make a significant lasting change so that you have a new, higher, relatively stable set point, what you really need to do is um, implement a change in your daily habits. So this could be something like um, starting a gratitude journal or going to yoga on a regular basis or moving somewhere where you're a place to a park and you can go to a park every day. Um, and we'll, we see that that then results in a new set point. The same way if you develop a negative habit, it's going to lower your set point, right? So if you develop a cocaine habit, that's going to mess your level of happiness and really bring it down. So there are a couple of things to keep in mind. The first is that our brains are not wired to think optimistically. Our brains are wired with a negativity bias. Um, anything that is bad is going to be stronger and more attention getting than what is good. Um, we tend to focus negative outcomes, um, and this is just the way our brain is as a result of how we evolved. So for our early ancestors, being optimistic didn't offer any kind of evolutionary advantage. Uh, if we left the cave and we're like, I'm fine, there are no predators, I'll be good, I can just live <coughs> on my day and, and nothing bad will happen to me, that person might be really vindictive. <laughs> and if the person who was a little more paranoid, who was on the lookout, was more likely to survive and therefore more likely to pass on their genes. So this is the wiring that we still work with today. Um, our brains are wired to protect us, to look out for any potential threat, uh, and to focus on anything that could potentially go wrong. So this is why if way that losing a friend hurts more for us than making new friends do us good. We don't stay up at night thinking about all the things that are going right in our life. We don't lose sleep over the things that we feel grateful for. Um, so knowing this, we know that we need to actively put a positive in our lives. We need to actively leverage that 40% and focus on happiness building activities um, and fostering positive interactions with people and figuring out what works and focusing on what's right with us instead of focusing on what's wrong because our brains are not naturally going to go there. Uh, the second thing to keep in mind is that there are many, many ways we can improve our levels of happiness and life satisfaction. Um, there was an article that came out, I think I posted it in the Facebook group for positive psychology and I posted it last week, and um, it was sort of misleading, but the title was something along the lines of, uh, alcohol and sex make you happier than kids and religion. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and when you read the article, what they were measuring really was pleasure. So yeah, sex and alcohol are more pleasurable than religion and having children. But happiness isn't just about pleasure. You do want to have pleasurable experiences, but there are other things things that bring meaning to your life and um, focusing on positive relationships. So we want to try and have a balance of things across different areas. Uh, the official model, the pathways for human flourishing in positive psychology is PERMA, right? Two things. PERMA stands for positivity, engagement, relationships, meaning, and achievement. So positivity is about um, increasing our experience of positive emotions. This is where gratitude comes in and curiosity um, and developing a growth mindset instead of a fixed mindset where you're just judging yourself all the time. 
Engagement is about um, mindfulness and being present and fully experiencing your life and having slow experiences. And that's actually one of my favorites right now. Um, I've, for the past six months, been incorporating, uh, deliberately having slow experiences at least twice a week. Um, and it's so awesome. I absolutely feel I'm so much more satisfied with life overall just from incorporating, incorporating it
you would increase lifetime stats. Um, if you were to try and implement all 12 at once, it would be really daunting and overwhelming. Um, so what we're going to do is, through this assessment, we're going to identify the top one or two that um, come the most naturally to us, um, that we enjoy the most, because these are the ones that are going to be easier to implement and sustain over time to increase our lifetime stats. So. We'll go through this together, and by the end, you can pick the top one or the top two and implement it into your life over the next few weeks, and we can see how that works for you. Um, so can we try? Can we do it behind the door? Yeah. yeah. Someone read uh, with us the talk. Consider which of the following twelve activities. Reflect on the activities <coughs> and engage in each activity every week for an extended period of time. Then rate each activity by writing a number one to seven in the space next to the words natural enjoyment. Describe different reasons for why you might choose to engage in a given activity. Right. I'm going to read the next part. Natural. Uh, each activity is intended to bring a feel, bring us feel natural to you and engage in things frequently. Enjoyment. Our people this activity to express our enjoyment in it. And I find it to be interesting and challenging. Value. Our people bring this activity to express our value and Not enjoyable. Guilt. I keep doing this activity because I feel guilt 
doing your answers, so I didn't do it. I forced myself to do it. I keep waiting. I keep doing it for two days, two days, and two days, two days, and I can tell you two days, I just kept telling you I could have gotten it done. Okay, so we're gonna go through each of the 12 activities, um, and for each of those values, mental enjoyment values or appreciation, um, you'll give it a rating from one to seven, one being not at all, and seven being very much. Um, so the first one, expressing gratitude. Counting your blessings for what you have, either to approach other or privately, through contemplation or a journal, or through days of gratitude and appreciation to one or more individuals who you never properly thank. Number three, avoiding overthinking and social comparison. Using strategies such as distraction to cut down on how often you dwell on your problems and compare yourself with others. Number four, practicing acts of kindness. Doing good things for others, whether friends or strangers, either directly or anonymously, either spontaneously or planned. Number five, nurturing social relationships. Taking a relationship in need of strengthening and investing time and energy in healing, cultivating, learning, and enjoying it. Number six, developing strategies for coping. Practicing ways to endure or surmount a recent stress, hardship, or trauma. Number seven, learning to forgive. Keeping a journal or writing a letter in which you work on letting go of anger and resentment towards one or more individuals who have hurt or wronged. Number eight, increasing, so experiences, so that's actually number eight. Increasing the number of experiences at home and work in which you lose yourself, which are challenging and rewarding. Number nine, picturing life stories. Paying close attention, taking delight, and replaying life's momentary pleasures and wonders through thinking, writing, drawing, and sharing with another. Number 10, committing your goals. Taking one, two, or three significant goals that are meaningful devoting time and effort to fulfilling them. Number 11, practicing religion and spirituality, becoming more involved in your church, temple, or mosque, or reading and pondering spiritually themed books. And number 12, taking care of your body, engaging in physical activity, meditating, and smiling and laughing. Um, so we're gonna take a few minutes for you to fill that out.
creating your prep for nationals. Um, if you want to do before Texas, um, then what you're going to do is add the values for natural enjoyment and value. <coughs>
one of the pathways more in depth. Mm -hmm. uh, there's one that's for entrepreneurs specifically, uh, so developing tools like mindset and resilience and grit that are useful for entrepreneurs um, in, their, in their careers. Um, and then we'll likely also have one that's for coaches and other helpers of humans, more specifically like healers or teachers who want to be able to use those tools with the populations they work with. Um, and then I also offer one-on-one -on -one, uh, if people want to work on a particular goal or work on technology based strategies for it, then there's that also. So those are the three things that we offer. Uh, you can check out the website, ContourTechnologyMiami.com. I have some cards Thank here. You.
announcement, um, actually. Uh, so this Friday, here um, in the main space, just outside this door, um, at 8 o'clock p.m. through 11 o'clock p.m., we're having a mindful tea gathering. For those of you who like tea, mindful conversation, and really great people, um, we're hosting a conversation about shame. Um, and um, one of the, the co-facilitators is going to be Alexandra Figueredo, she's the current president of the Miami Holistic Chamber of Commerce. Um, and um, she's doing, you're writing a book. Um, she's yeah, collecting stories and studies about shame as an emotion and its effects on people and breakthrough stories that people have had around it. And so we're gonna be having um, all sorts of discussions about uh, shame and its effects on us. Uh, so if you're interested in doing that, uh, this Friday at eight o'clock p.m., Meet us here. There will be tea and friends, and um, yeah. yeah. They usually pick a group picture at the very end, and so for those of you who stay, we'd like to um, support Melissa on our social media. And again, my name is Christina Pierce. I don't know if I said that before. I'm the wellness director here at the San Francisco Team. We have a lot of great events. We have we've teamed up with the Holistic Chamber of Commerce, and they do some awesome events. Brian also.